a true lover of numbers, who made remarkable contributions to mathematics. He collaborated with other brilliant minds, exploring and discovering new things about how numbers work. Thanks to his efforts, our understanding of math expanded, leaving a lasting impact on the world of numbers. Meet Godfrey Harold Hardy. Hardy came into the world on February 7, 1877, in Cranley, Surrey, England. He was born into a family with a background in teaching. His father served as bursar and art master at Cranley School, while his mother had previously held a senior position at Lincoln Training College for teachers. Even though Hardy's parents were smart and knew a bit about math, they couldn't go to university because they came from poor families. Hardy's talent for mathematics became apparent at a very young age. By the time he was just two years old, he could already write numbers up to millions. Even during church services, he entertained himself by breaking down the numbers found in the hymns into their factors. Hardy attended Cranley School up to the age of 12 with great success. He got a scholarship to Winchester College in 1889 and started there the next year. Winchester was known for its great math teaching, but Hardy didn't really like anything about the school except the academics. It was tough for him because he was shy and not very strong. While at Winchester, Hardy won an open scholarship to Trinity College, Cambridge, which he entered in 1896. In just two years of studying with his coach, Robert Alfred Herman, Hardy came fourth in the mathematics tripos exam. Later on, he wanted to get rid of the tripos system, because he thought it was becoming too focused on the test itself rather than learning. During his time at university, Hardy also became part of the Cambridge Apostles, a special group for smart and thoughtful students. Hardy said the book, Cours d'analyse de l'école polytechnique, by Camille Jordan was the most important thing he studied on his own. It introduced him to the precise math style used in Europe. In 1900, he passed part two of the Tripos exam, and got elected for a special prize fellowship at Trinity College. In 1903, he got his MA, which was a big deal back then in English universities. When his fellowship ended in 1906, he became a math lecturer at Trinity, teaching six hours a week and having time for research. A big change happened in Hardy's career in 1911 when he started working with J. E. Littlewood, and they worked together for 35 years. Then, in early 1913, Hardy got a letter from Ramanujan in India, and they started working together too. When World War I began in 1914, Ramanujan was already in Cambridge, which made things easier for Hardy during this tough time. In 1912 Hardy published, with John E. Littlewood, the first of a series of papers that contributed fundamentally to many realms in mathematics, including the theory of Diophantine analysis, divergent series summation, Fourier series, the Riemann zeta function, and the distribution of primes. The collaboration between Hardy and Littlewood is one of the most celebrated in 20th century mathematics. In a 1947 lecture, the Danish mathematician Harold Bohr reported a colleague as saying, Nowadays, there are only three really great English mathematicians, Hardy, Littlewood, and Hardy Littlewood. Hardy's work with Ramanujan was really special. In an interview with Paul Erdős, when Erdős asked Hardy what his biggest contribution to math was, Hardy said without hesitation that it was discovering Ramanujan. In a lecture about Ramanujan, Hardy said that his time working with him was the most romantic thing that happened in his life. 
Hardy quickly recognized Ramanujan's brilliance when he received a manuscript from him in 1913. Hardy invited Ramanujan to Cambridge, and together they collaborated on five extraordinary papers. Hardy and Ramanujan worked on something called integer partitions, which led to the Hardy-Ramanujan asymptotic formula. This formula has been really useful in physics, helping scientists like Niels Bohr, figure out stuff about atomic nuclei, and thermodynamic functions in certain systems. Even though Hardy preferred his math to be purely theoretical, a lot of his work ended up being used in other areas of science. Hardy came up with something called the Hardy-Weinberg principle, which is a basic rule in population genetics, all on his own in 1908. He used to play cricket with a guy named Reginald Punnett, who asked him a math problem related to genetics. Hardy wasn't really into genetics, and thought the math part was easy. He might not have known at the time how big of a deal this principle would become. It was not only with Littlewood, and Ramanujan that Hardy collaborated. Hardy was the author or co-author of more than 300 papers and 11 books, including A Course of Pure Mathematics, which ran into 10 editions and transformed university teaching, inequalities with Littlewood, the theory of numbers with Wright, and divergent series. Hardy's book, A Mathematician's Apology, was written in 1940. It is one of the most vivid descriptions of how a mathematician thinks, and the pleasure of mathematics. The mathematician's patterns, like those of the painters or the poets, must be beautiful, the ideas, like the colors or the words, must fit together in a harmonious way. There is no permanent place in the world for ugly mathematics. Hardy liked his work to be seen as pure math, maybe because he didn't like war, and how math was used in the military. He often said things like this in his apology. I have never done anything, useful. No discovery of mine has made, or is likely to make, directly or indirectly, for good or ill, the least difference to the amenity of the world. There was only one passion in Hardy's life other than mathematics, and that was cricket. Maynard Keynes observed that, if Hardy had read the stock exchange for half an hour every day with as much interest, and attention as he did the day's cricket scores, he would have become a rich man. Hardy was very shy and socially awkward as a child, and this continued into adulthood. Even though he did well in school and won lots of awards, he didn't like getting attention in front of others. He found it hard to meet new people, and couldn't stand looking at himself in mirrors. Some say he even covered mirrors with towels, when he stayed in hotels. He could not endure having his photograph taken, and only five snapshots are known to exist. World War I was tough for Hardy, and World War II was just as hard. Before 1939, he stayed mentally and physically youthful. However, at 62, he had a heart attack, and things changed. His strong mind started to fade, and he couldn't enjoy sports anymore. He was angry that Europe was once again in the chaos of war. By the time the war ended in 1945, Hardy's health was declining rapidly. He wished he could be creative again, as that was what truly mattered to him, but he felt like his creativity had disappeared. This made him very depressed. By 1946, he could only move around by taking taxis, as walking even a short distance left him breathless. In the early summer of 1947, he attempted to end his life by taking a lot of sleeping pills. However, 
He took too many and ended up being sick, but he survived. Hardy died on December 1, 1947, in Cambridge, England. He passed away from complications related to a kidney infection. Hardy received many honors for his work. He was elected a Fellow of the Royal Society in 1910, he received the Royal Medal of the Society in 1920 and Sylvester Medal of the Society in 1940. He also received the Copley Medal of the Royal Society in 1947. He was President of the London Mathematical Society from 1926 to 1928 and again from 1939 to 1941. He received the De Morgan Medal of the Society in 1929.